I greet you this evening in the name of our Lord and Savior, who is Christ Jesus. It'll be necessary for me to, to announce all the hymns and what will be taking place. I understand that the bulletins haven't arrived, but nevertheless, we shall... Oh, are they here? Maybe not. Welcome to this center place of Zion, combined service. Uh, I do greet you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, and couldn't help but think as the priesthood came out early to enjoy the prelude with you, that the Lord is pleased when his saints gather together to worship him in spirit and in truth. It's pleasing unto the Lord, and so let us continue to worship him this evening by first hearing ministry music that will be provided by the Keeler family.
Thank you so much. Appreciate that. They'll be performing a second ministry of music later on in the service. My brethren who are serving with me on the rostrum tonight are from my right, Deacon Carl Miller, who will be bringing the invocation. And beside him is priest Keith Crickshank, who will be uh, doing the offertory and neurotic moment combined into one. Next to him, of course, the speaker of the hour, who Bruce Terry, who I'll have more to say about later. And the closing prayer shall be offered by uh, Patriarch James Rogers, and I am High Priest Wayne Bartrow. The pianist and accompanist is Diana Galbraith, and serving us as, a de as the deacon in charge to this evening is Rick Terry. My call to worship that I've selected is taken from uh, section 42 of our Doctrine and Covenants, which was given in to Joseph Smith Jr. in 1831, and I selected this particular uh, revelation because it, it so coincides with the theme for this evening, which is, I will build my church. Uh, those are the words of the Lord that have, in fact, already been fulfilled. He did do exactly as he said he would. He did build his church, and today that church is known among men as the Remnant Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or if you prefer the, the abbreviated version, RLDS, which is what it was usually called during the days of the reorganization. But these are the days that the Remnant Church has been called forth. And as I read this passage from section 42, it'll become more clear. Inasmuch as ye shall find them that will receive you, ye shall build up my church in every region until the time shall come when it shall be revealed unto you from on high when the city of the new Jerusalem shall be prepared, that ye may be gathered in one, and that ye may be my people, and I will be your God. I pray that he might bear witness of the truth of those words that he shared in 1831. Would you turn in your hymnals number to number 272 at this time, please? The church's one foundation. And when you've found your place, we shall all stand for the invocation by Brother Miller that will follow. <laughs>
dear, most glorified, loving Heavenly Father, we are gathered here in your place of worship to ask that you would give a special blessing to our speaker tonight, and you would bless all of us as we begin to worship with each other tonight, and ask that you would seal this prayer and the blessing of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The theme for our ironic moment today has been Grow the Law in the Body. I selected to read them section 10. Behold, this is your work to keep my commandments, yea, with all your might, mind, and strength. Seek not to declare my word, but first seek to obtain my word, and then shall your, your tongue be loosed. Then, if you desire, you shall have my spirit and my word, yea, the power of God unto the convincing of men. But now, hold your peace, study my word, which hath gone forth among the children of men, and also study my word, which shall come forth among the children of men. Write the word in our hearts so we can have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We must know the word if we are to know him. As we make our offering tonight, may we remember the commitment that we have made with the Lord Jesus Christ. May the deacons come forward. Shall we pray? Our Father, we come to this part of the service where we have an opportunity to give back unto you. We thank you for the many blessings that you do bestow upon us each day. May you continue to be with us. Help us to give our all unto thee so that thy kingdom might come that ye might return unto us. We ask these things in Christ's holy name. Amen. The uh, order of worship that I made, I can change. So we're going to skip the next hymn that I was going to uh, ask you to sing at this time in order to, to provide Brother Bruce a little more time in his sermon. So would he please offer his scripture read? A 
love it. I greet you tonight in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I would say peace unto you, my brothers and sisters. Some of you I have not seen for several months, and it's good to lay eyes upon you. The scripture that I've chosen tonight is one that you've all heard and you know. And it comes from Jesus when he was talking with his disciples. And it comes out of the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter. And I will begin with verse 14. And this is Jesus saying to his disciples, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say the John the Baptist, some say Elias and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And Jesus did a direct question to them. But whom say you that I am? And without hesitation, I can just see one of the favorite apostles that I've read about and know his story. Peter and he says, Simon Peter answered, and he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said and answered him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. May God add his blessings upon the reading of his word this night.
Thank you. He needs no introduction. Uh, as a matter of fact, Brother Bruce was the speaker last Sunday night, and I asked him, I says, how often do you get an opportunity to have back-to-back -back sermons that you can bring a sequel? So he, he has a one, of, one, one chance in, an in a lifetime opportunity here, uh, but I want to share before he begins this evening to build upon what he's already shared with us to offer a brief testimony that I know you haven't heard before. And that is that when my wife and I were on our hiatus uh, from the church uh, and we went back to Michigan for some years, the first home that we lived in when we went back was a little bitty cottage, 800 square feet, that wasn't far from Lake Huron, uh, part of a little village called Lexington. And uh, we're sitting there in our little bitty living room one evening when there's a knock on the door and we answered it and who should be standing in front of it but Bruce and his partner at that time uh, the late uh, Richard Wilson, who then was a 70 himself. And the two of them came in and, and they ministered unto us. And then I learned afterwards, as they continued in their travels, there were other people we knew in Michigan that they visited as well. There was a second occasion when, when they actually found me in a hospital room in Port Yorn and visited me there as well. And they said, when have we done these things, Lord? And the Lord said, inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. And I can bear witness that as a 70, they seek the lost sheep to bring them back into the fold. Brother Bruce Terry. Thank you, my brother. I do remember those good trips that we had with my brothers and sisters all over Michigan, all over Canada, over Ohio, over Illinois, and many, many other states. And to my brother and sisters, Keelers, you don't know that first song that you sang, you ushered the spirit in, and you touched my heart. And I brought back to my memory of my, my buddy down in Oklahoma, the greatest fisherman of all that, that I loved to go and fish with and to go down and to um, speak the word of the Lord to, to whoever would come. And my brother Dwayne would bring many, many people. 
And he told me one time, he sure, I'd sure like to go out with you guys, but I've got so many ridge runners to go catch and try to bring them to the word of the Lord in our little church in Blackham. I thought about him when you were singing that song. And it seemed like I'd go down to Oklahoma probably two or three times a year back when Brother Collins was an apostle and he made me do a series down there that scared me half out of my, my <laughs> comfort zone. But I appreciate that, brother, for doing that because the blessing was untold that came back to me. Many trips that I've made down to Oklahoma and the many um, opportunities that I had to be able to share with my brothers and sisters there. And I'm trying to find my scripture or a um, song that I wanted to share. For years, when I would go to, to Oklahoma, and I remember sitting up there with Dwayne and, and in the back of their hymnals, they had Amazing Grace and it was pasted to the back of there. And I would I'd be prepared and I would be ready to sing with my brothers and sisters there. And it got to be that it seemed like it was every time that I showed up. And after a couple years, I got to thinking, wow, am I, am I missing something? I mean, because this, this is pretty good. And if you haven't taken the chance to read the words slowly and let them absorb into you, I challenge you to read that. <clears throat> And take the words that come because we're all sinners. It doesn't matter what walk of life you've come. We all fall short. And it got to be that this one Sunday morning that Dwayne was there and I was already turned to the page. And I started to read the words as he was making the announcements of, of whatever need to be said. And I took those words and I applied them to my life and thought, my God, oh my God, how you've been there for me all my life. And your blessings continue to shine upon me and my family. And I'm not afraid to say that I, I am a rich man, not financially wise by any means, but through our family, our children, our grandchildren, through the friends that, that I have come to know through you, my brothers and sisters, I know that without any shadow of doubt, that the Lord is blessing us. I know. I'm only going to read one word because I want to get into one of my favorite topics. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. You know, when Paul was out, and in our terms today, we would call Paul a bounty hunter. And he was out on his way into a little town called Damascus. And he was doing what the Pharisees and the Sadducees had gave him the letter to do, to go find another little pocket of people that were worshiping and calling upon the name Jesus Christ 
and he was there to try to take and bound them and take them and have them persecuted, have them killed. You gotta excuse me, I'm dry tonight for some reason. And there were several of them with them on that trip to Damascus. And all of a sudden they heard, they heard, they saw a light. And the only one that heard something was Saul. And so much were they startled by the light that they fell off the, the animals that they were riding, fell to the ground. And Saul heard those words, why do you persecute my saints? And Saul was blinded by the light and he remained that way for the next three days. Even though he was blind that he could not see, inside his mind, his eyes were being opened. And he was being taught from on high. And Ananias, who was a Lord's servant, the Lord shared with him in a dream, Ananias, I want you to go and seek this Paul. And I want you to lay hands on him. And I want you to take and, and do and say these words unto him that he might receive that sight. And then I, I can only imagine, said, eh, Lord, do you know what kind of person this is? He seeks us, the saints, out. And he has us taken up and killed. And the Lord shared with him, Paul knows what kind of challenges he will take. He knows the, the persecution that will fall upon him. And he is a chosen vessel unto me. And Ananias listened and obeyed to the Lord. And he went and laid hands on Saul. And his eyes were open and it says almost like scales fell off. And there's one important thing that as many times as I've read that, I never picked up or it just went by that in that same time that he was a minister to with the, with the spirit was laid upon him, that he is also baptized. I never picked that up before until yesterday. I thought, I thought that was pretty good. Our theme tonight is one that, gosh, for years and years, I've been out in the looking for the searching for the lost, the, the ones that we even hear or, or want to hear who Jesus Christ was and his church that he built here upon this earth when he was here in flesh and blood. I'm excited that when I saw that I was asked for that opportunity to come and, and greet with you and share those many blessings that the Lord has opened up unto me and be able to share the, the one of my favorite topics is Jesus Christ saying, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Brothers and sisters, if you read the sixth chapter of Ephesians, you know that you and I are in a spiritual battle because you confess that you are a Christian and that you are a follower of Jesus Christ and the wards of, of sin is trying to come at your door and he will try to take you out. The scriptures say he will even challenge and try to persuade the very elect. And who are the very elect? Those that hear his voice and obey his commandments. I brought with me what, what I take with me out when we go out on the road, because I never know the opportunity might arise to be able to share with someone. 
And the first one is, you guys all seen this. I talked about it last week, life after death. It's one of my favorite things. But the other one on the flip side is a church that Jesus Christ built. I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask you tonight. If I may, how many people grew up in the church? Can I see your hands? Wow, quite a few. Okay, how many people are converts to the church? Quite a few as well. I know my wife better raise her hand. Cause <laughs> Do you know what you have in your hands? I was one of those ones that grew up in the church and, and I can re still remember in Sunday school. Maybe some of you might be able to as well. Of, of these kind of pictures and, and the teacher being able to explain all the offices and all the gifts and why the whole church was structured. And we would color it and we would go on and it would happen again. And I've come to the conclusion, wow, time's already getting away. I've already come to the conclusion that many of us that grew up in the church, we kind of take these things for granted that the Lord put in place for us. And I kind of wanted to go through a little bit as time permits tonight. Same thing, same church, but it's a little bit more detailed that I've got my notes on. And you know, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that a lot of the converts that's coming to this church, that when they're adults, that they study it out and they research it. And they look up the scriptures and they try to figure out, well, if it says this, how can it say that? And if you don't know a way to try to be able to converse with someone that may have the King James Bible, It's a, it's a little bit of a twist to be able to share and, and take them to why we have the inspired version. Again, many times we take this for granted and we don't realize what we have. When I was out, when we were out in West Virginia a few weeks ago, and I see a lot of more different people than was here last Sunday night, so I, you guys might get to hear a double dose of that last Sunday night, but I feel it's good to be able to encourage our people and to share with them what's going on out there. When Ray and I went a few weeks ago, I had this lady that when Roger Shulky and I was down in, in Florida earlier part of this spring, I got a text from Dawn saying that she wanted me to, to baptize her. And I was, we were already having a good trip down there in Florida and that just added to it. Because she made me, she didn't make me promise, but she said six, seven years ago, that if and when I ever come into the, this church, the Remnant Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, if and when that happens, I want you to baptize me. And I said, I'd be honored to. And she's now 31, 32 years old. And year after year after year after year, I kept thinking, is this gonna be the year she asked? And I would share with her more things when we had that opportunity to, to be out there. Another year went by, another year went by. And got the message earlier this year that you desired to have baptism. And I said, yes, I would love to do that. 
So the presiding editor called me and said, when can you come out? And we calculated our dates back and forth. And that was at the end of, of uh, July, 1st of August, somewhere around there. So we headed out there. And we met with them Friday afternoon. And as we were visiting with the, the pastor out there, he said, you know, we've got four more that desire to be baptized as well. And I was just like, unbelievable. Is this too good to be true? Five people. And you say, you know, we got a sixth person, but he wants to ask a few questions. I said, we're ready. And he came over to the house. And him and I went out on the front porch and we discussed those questions that he had. Now Don is 53 years old. He's planted both feet in the world. But two of his kids were the ones getting baptized as well. And they were working on him. And when I was out there, the scriptures, John 3, 1 through 5, came to mind. And I'm going to read that tonight for your hearing because I think that's vital and important. You all know this. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, so he was a high official of the Jews. He was a teacher. The same came to Jesus by night. So right there, you know, if he's coming to, to the Lord by night, he didn't want his other fellow um, rulers of the Jewish people, Pharisees and Sadducees, to see him coming to him by night. So it was kind of like a secrety thing. And the same came to Jesus by night, said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher that comes from God, for no man can do these miracles which thou doest, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Very important. And Nicodemus asked him a fair question. How can a man be born again? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I share with him that I had the life after death pamphlet. I share with him that, that this is what could happen to you if you accept Jesus Christ into your heart and that you would take him in and I went a few other places that Matthew 3 where Jesus Christ himself set the example that he himself was baptized, one that knew no sin. And the Holy Ghost fell upon him in the form of a dove. The Holy Ghost given to him, the second part of baptism. I wanted to make crystal clear unto him to dawn that there is two parts that the world does not teach or confess or believe in like what you and I have. And I went a couple more places and I said, Don, that was pretty quick that what we went through. But the hour is going late and it's pretty much in your court what you want to do. 
But you know one thing that, that I saw in his eyes? You know, it says scripture that the, the, the eyes of the soul to your, to your inside. I saw that sparkle. I saw that twinkle in his eyes. Here Don was changing right in front. Not nothing, nothing that I said or did, but the Lord was using me as an instrument in his hands. It's a long ways out there to West Virginia. And I said, it's in your, your hands what you want to do. He says, I want to get baptized. I said, that's great. The next thing you got to do is figure out who you want to, to baptize you. And you know, the place where we had the baptisms was his house at his pool. And after we got those ones baptized and we were drying off and in our clothes, I said, Don, did you ever imagine that when you had this built seven years ago that you would be having baptisms here? He said, nope. Would never have thought of it. Did you ever imagine that yourself would be getting baptized in there? No way, no how. Little background on Don. Don is a part owner of a, um, I, I think he's part owner, part owner of a, a tow truck service. Don has seen some pretty bad wrecks over the years that he's been towing vehicles. He has seen death come in all different ways. So he knew of this opportunity. And I shared with him, again, I shared last week, Matthew 11, where the Lord extended that invitation to all to come and learn of him. Time is flying. <clears throat> Matthew 7, 34. I have another question for you. Jesus again, I'm sorry for tonight on that. Jesus again is speaking to the people. Verse 7, I'm sorry, verse 34, chapter 7, Matthew. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew. And beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Verse 35. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, who shall build his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall. I've been in construction for 40 years. I've seen a lot of foundations, floors crack, all because a lot of the contractors did not do the right procedures and how to shore up or or how to test the soil and how to make that foundation so they will not have that problem. And I talked to uh, a friend of mine earlier today who is a master builder. And I told him about the scripture in, in Ephesians 2 that talks about Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And in the little church, if you remember, 
that Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone and how crucial and how critical it is that when you put this cornerstone in place that it will not only determine the height, the width, the length of your building, but if you don't put this in properly, squared, level, plumb, perfect, that in two or 300 feet, if it's even off an eighth of an inch, the results at the end of that two or 300 feet would magnify it that it could be off several inches. And the Lord talks about, Paul talks about in Ephesians 2, and we are built upon the foundations of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the buildings fitly framed together groweth into a holy temple in the Lord. I had other scriptures that, that I wanted to share. And you know, it's, it's ironic when I have the opportunity to be able to take and show the church slides, the cottage meetings, that when we come to this part, I can only get halfway through it. Because usually the questions start coming forth. I had a friend years and years ago. He asked me, he says, You're, you go to church, don't you? And I said, yes, I do. He said, do you feel like your church is the right church? And I said, yes, I do. He said, with over 8,000 churches in the world, what makes you think that your church is right? I said, because it's the closest church that Jesus built when he was here upon the earth in flesh and blood. That's why I feel that it's the right church. And it's here again in these latter days for all who will listen. And it's very, very simple. You can go and read the New Testament and you can discover yourself how the Lord built his church. I want to I want to close and I, I I can't help but closing because of the the testimonies I gave last week regarding out in West Virginia. You know, Brother Wilson and I we have traveled over 30 some thousand miles together. And at one part of, of one year, we had gone almost two months. And Brother Dick was not a young chicken. But he kept me running. And I tried to look after him like, like my father. And I remember that um, the work that we did out in West Virginia, and Don, Brother Don Burnett is, is uh, doing that twice a year with retreats. But the groundwork that made this possible with the baptisms that we did a few weeks ago came from the groundwork that was laid 10 and 11 years ago of the many times that we went out and we came back with our heads tucked, beating ourselves up. What are we doing wrong? Why won't something click? And in a few months, we would get our composures back and, and get our energy and head back out there again or go up north or Toronto. And year after year after year, we kept showing up, maybe because we didn't know any better. But it's not yet the Lord's timing. 
I want to share with my last testimony of being out there. I know there's more baptisms out there. This one lady that would all, I would try to be, it, it's no secret, I know the Lord has given me multi gifts to be able to share and to, to be able to, to entice people to be a fisher of men. And I've used everything that I know of out there with all the gifts that he's bestowed upon me and I kept running into a wall and I just did not understand. Within five minutes of a complete stranger, I know no strangers. Within five minutes, I can tell pretty much about that person because that's the gift that he's given me of discernment. One of the many gifts that the Lord gave into this church the gifts of the Spirit. And you remember all the gifts of, of the Spirit around that, that the windows inside. And what does a window do? It lets the light in. And these gifts that the Lord has set in place in His church that we might be able to find more people. And so that at the close of, of a great service, six confirmations on that Sunday morning. And the women can really cook out there. You guys can too, but the women can really cook out there in, in West Virginia. I know Lydia and Joyce know that. And we were there at, at uh, Potluck and, and we had tried to make, um, so Ray was gonna be speaking that night at Parkersburg, which is an hour plus away. And it was almost time to, to leave, pretty much, just to get there early. And I was sitting at the table with the presiding elder and we were just kind of chit-chatting along. And all of a sudden this woman, she comes over and sits by me. And I'm almost like, I think my jaw must have hit the floor. And I thought, what is going on? And she begins to speak, which I've always tried to get conversations going. And the first question she had, she said, how many people have you baptized? And I told her, I don't try to keep track of that because I don't want pride to try to enter in with that but I have them all recorded at home in my file cabinet because each one of them is precious unto me. Kathy up in Lake Michigan. But I, out of, out of not trying to get a big head, I said, it's not that I keep track of that. It's that I try to make myself the Lord's servant and to share and give unto those ones who are searching and looking. Because what does it take two different things to happen to be able to come into the Lord's church? Two steps, remember? Faith and repentance. And it could be either one, the first one, faith and repentance or repentance and faith. And as, I, as she asked me another question, I was just like, I can't believe this. And then she began to ask me another one that hit to my heart. And I said, you know, I won't say her name, but I said, you know, last year I had, you know, I had that procedure, a medical thing that I thought maybe my time of being able to be a missionary was at its end. And I went emotional on her. And I could not quit sobbing. And by this time, it's just her and me at this table. 
and I was apologizing all over myself. And I looked up into her eyes, and her eyes were wet too. And I thought, thank you, Lord, it's hitting home with her. I said, would you like to go outside and where we can be a little bit alone because the noise was getting pretty loud and the old hearing from construction won't, won't let me hear so well. And I need to back up a minute that her mom and dad had shown up and all three were of other, other denomination. And they were good people, good, good Christian people, good believers. And so as her and I went outside to, to go out to the picnic table and sit, here were her mom and dad sitting there as well. And so it began. I began to share with them, and that wall was kind of up somewhat. But as I shared the pure love of Jesus Christ, as Moroni or in, in the Book of Mormon talks about, that wall was beginning to fall. And for the next hour and a half, I witnessed to them about who Jesus Christ was and what we believed in and the blessings that foretook are untold. And Matthew talks about that we are to be a sower of seeds that we throw them out and some will catch and some will grab root and some will die off. But as a missionary, that's our call to go out to the lost, to find those ones and to plant those seeds. I ask that you might remember the ones in West Virginia because the Lord is not done. I felt that. I saw that and I witnessed that. You know, each one of you, every one of you are missionaries. You witness you can witness if you step out of that comfort zone. The Lord is desiring for that to happen. His church needs to go forward and grow. The time is short and we need to be about his work. We need to be about those ones that we can evangelize to. It's never been so prevalent with my recent studying. God bless each one of you. And may we do that work. I would like for you to uh, turn to hymn number 274. That's the hymn that I skipped over earlier. 274, Church of Christ in the Latter Days. We'll sing the first, second, and fifth verses. First, second, and fifth verses, please.
our kind, loving Heavenly Father. It has indeed been good tonight to come to your house to hear the inspired message which was brought by Brother Bruce. It's good to come to your house to hug a lot of necks to visit the fellowship of those we love and we walk the path, the way of life together. It's good to come and be reminded of the responsibility that each of us have to walk in that straight and narrow path, to keep your commandments, to exalt your name, to work diligently to build up the kingdom of God here on this earth. Thank you for this restored gospel. Thank you for these devoted saints who love you and who are trying their best to promote Zion and your coming kingdom. In the days that lie ahead, guide us, inspire us, and lead us, and help us to be the people you call us to be. We pray this in the high and holy and worthy and the magnificent name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw me. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Even then, the night will shine like day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Search me, God, and know my heart, and lead me in the way everlasting. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made.